working in the BBC newsroom and the editor of the television evening news comes over to my desk and says, James, right, I've got a story for you to do on the news tonight. The story is that, for argument's sake, gas prices have gone up, we're in the middle of winter, it's going to hit pensioners particularly hard and we're worried that some pensioners simply aren't going to be able to afford to heat their homes with this new rise in gas prices. I could say to the editor of the news, don't worry, I don't need a camera crew, I'll just stay in the studio and have a nice quiet day today and put me in front of a, a big screen during your television news programme and give me a nice graph and I'll stand in front of the graph and go, look, here's how gas prices have risen and yes, those poor pensioners at the top, they're not going to get their homes heated. And people will sit at home watching the news and think, okay, those poor pensioners. But actually, if I take my camera crew off and find the human element, just choose a couple of pensioners and go to their house, two pensioners who can't afford to heat their homes and I'm filming them shivering in their houses, that's only two people, unlike the hundreds of thousands on my graph, but we as humans are going to engage much better with a human story than we ever are with a graph that's showing a big statistic. So I need to personalise my stories. That's the way to get the audience to engage, to remember my content. Now that's a technique I use in the BBC, but actually it's a technique we should all be using in our working lives. If we can talk about the people who are actually impacted by what we're trying to change, rather than just the overview, we've got much more chance of getting people to engage, be interested, and of course, remember what we're talking about.